Since the introduction of Ark 3.0, Ark Hunters have ascended to a remarkable level of power. With this power, they can walk up to an enemy, punch them, and walk away like they never even existed. Ark Hunters excel in swiftly eliminating threats while withstanding relentless assaults making them one of the best ad clear builds in the game. In this video, I will delve into the Ark Hunter build I use for all content just shy of a Grandmaster. Let's get into it. For the exotic, you can either run Assassin's Cal for the invisibility, or Liar's Handshake for the increased melee damage and health regeneration with the cross counter perk. For Liar's Handshake, we are betting on the cross counter exotic perk since it increases our melee damage by 200% when either receiving or dealing melee damage. When hitting enemies with cross counter active, you get some health back, which allows you to tank damage from other adds. With Assassin's Cal, every time we get a powered melee hit, we are going invisible, allowing us to get away from the adds and build up our combination blows more safely. I would opt for this when the solo content is a bit harder, like a Legend or Master Lost Sector, but you can use this in fire teams as well. Onto the subclass. Starting off with the super. Arc Staff and Gathering Storm are both great supers depending on what you are trying to achieve with them, but I prefer to stick with Gathering Storm for its damage potential on bosses. Combination Blow is essential for this build as we will be building it up to three times for the most amount of damage possible. This takes three powered melee final blows to get to max stacks and is a 23% damage buff per stack. Stack this up with a one-two punch shotgun and you will be doing a lot of damage per hit. The grenade is your choice, but I prefer to use Pulse Grenade. It's a simple grenade that you can throw at a group of adds or at your feet. Moving on to the aspects. First, we have Flow State. Defeating a Jolted target makes you Amplified, which in turn increases your dodge recharge rate, makes you more resilient while dodging, and increases your reload speed. The next aspect we have is Lethal Current, which, after dodging, increases the lunge range, jolts the target, and creates a damaging aftershock on your next melee attack. Damaging any Jolted target with melee attacks also blinds them. Now for the Fragments. First up is Spark of Feedback. This increases our melee damage briefly when taking melee damage. Getting Combination Blow proc can sometimes take a bit, so having the extra damage is nice. Spark of Ions is the next fragment, and is what makes Ionic Traces. Ionic Traces basically acts like a distribution mod that gives all of your abilities energy. I'll have the percentages on screen. Spark of Resistance makes you more resistant when surrounded by three or more enemies. Back then, this fragment was busted, but now it's a bit more tamed while still retaining its viability for this build. Lastly, we have Spark of Shock. Spark of Shock will allow us to jolt targets with our grenades, which plays nicely into our aspects since we can become amplified on demand with this. I put an emphasis on mobility and resilience. Resilience is a must now with a 30% damage reduction, and mobility is nice to have in the event that you accidentally dodge too far from an enemy and don't get your charge melee back. Lastly, I dump the rest into discipline and strength. I prefer focusing on my grenades since I have mobility to cover my melee in case I dodge at a bad time. Intellect is useless on this build since we have mods that can get our super back faster. Here's the overview of the mods. These apply to both builds. Starting off with the helmet, we have Heavy Ammo Finder, Hands On, which allows us to get our super back faster when getting melee kills, and Harmonic Siphon to generate orbs of power with arc weapon kills. For the gauntlets, we have Heavy Handed so our melee final blows create orbs of power, Momentum Transfer to reduce our grenade cooldown on melee hits, and Fastball to throw a grenade farther. You can opt out Fastball for something else like Focusing Strike, but I didn't have the energy for it. For the chest, I run a copy of Charged Up so I can have one extra armor charge. Otherwise, you can run whatever resistant or reserve mod you need. For the boots, I run one recuperation mod for the extra health and one or two arc weapon surges. You can change up the surge mods to whatever element you are using, but with the vast amount of arc weapons we have that are actually good, I prefer just sticking with arc surge. Finally, for the cloak, I am running a bomber mod for extra grenade ability on dodge use, time dilation to increase the duration of my surge mods, and powerful attraction to pick up any orbs we make just by dodging. Let's move on to the weapons. Arc weapons are ideal since we can use Harmonic Siphon to make orbs of power. I recommend trying to get a 1-2 punch shotgun in the kinetic slot like Reginald D or Wastelander M5. You can also forgo this altogether and not worry about it since you will already be doing a lot of damage no matter which exotic armor piece you use. For the primary ammo weapons in the energy slot, I recommend Ikelos SMG version 1.0.3 since they can roll with perks like Threat Detector and Volt Shot, but if you have an earlier version of it with a good roll, then that'll work as well. My next choice would be Sweet Sorrow from Season 16. While it doesn't have Volt Shot, it's still one of the better auto rifles in the game for PvE with perk combinations like Stats for All and One for All. And lastly, if you're into sidearms, Brigand's Law from Season 18 is a wonderful choice and is really powerful. It has all the fun perks like Threat Detector and Perpetual Motion in the third column and Volt Shot in the fourth. If you plan on running special weapons, I recommend Techian Force from Last Wish, the exotic Trace Rifle Cold Heart, and the legendary Arc Trace from Season 19 Path of Least Resistance. For the Heavy, the new Crota Heavy Machine Gun Song of Ur-U has Rewind Rounds and Reconstruction, and it can also roll with Target Lock and Sword Logic in the fourth column. If you need a rocket for damage, the Hothead is still a solid choice and is Arc, so you don't have to switch your Surge mods out. Otherwise, I stick to the Tried and True Thunderlord as it's just an insanely good exotic. 
In conclusion, Arc Hunters are strong. They are very powerful and can hold the fort when it comes to ad clear. I highly recommend trying out both Liar's Handshake and Assassin's Cow with this build. For me, as useful as Assassin's Cow is for solo play and its easy survivability, I prefer the raw power from Liar's as I can tank the damage and get my health back on melee kills. It's strong and powerful and this build has gotten me out of a lot of tight binds from ads swarming me from all sides to three crota knights wanting to shove their swords in places they don't normally belong. This build is an essential piece for all hunter players. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and consider checking out some of my other build guides on the channel. Sorry for the lack of uploads, I recently got a job and have been working a lot. As always, have a good one and happy punching.